This week on the Computer Chronicles, how your PC can help you manage your finances. We'll show you how to use Quicken, the most popular computer finance package. You'll learn how to do your income taxes with a PC using TurboTax or TaxCut. And we'll show you how to make money, maybe, with programs like Windows on Wall Street and eSchwab, an online do-it-yourself stock market trading program. Also, PC-based home banking and a visit to the IRS. All this plus Giles Online, this week's computer news, my pick of the week, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Acer America, proud supporters of intelligent programming, computer or otherwise. And by Intel, the computer inside. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. One of the best uses of a personal computer is for managing your personal finances, and by far the most popular program for doing that is Quicken from Intuit, and Larry's here to show us Quicken. You've got a new version of Quicken which just came out, Quicken Deluxe, and what I want to ask you is if I have my manual system, I'm used to writing my checks and paying my bills the old-fashioned way, how complicated is it for me to learn Quicken and to switch my system over to the PC? Well, Stuart, one of the things that Intuit's done over the years is try to make it easier for people to do that. And in doing that, we've come up with something we call the new user setup. When you first start into Quicken, you'll see this particular screen here. And this is what we call the easy step. And it walks you through the process of actually setting up your first So it'll account. tell me what I have to do. I mean, I don't really have to read a 200-page manual to do all this? Exactly. And when you have the CD deluxe version, there's an audio voiceover that comes on. Uh -huh. It actually explains what's going on and helps you get started. So show me what, what my accounts would look like once I set them up here. So once you're set up, you would have your account set like this. When you first start, this is the first thing you'd see. This is our Quicken Home Base. Okay. And you go into the register. That's my check register? That's right. And it looks just like your paper check register, but the difference is, is that Quicken uses the power of the computer to make data entry even simpler. So data entry, for example, is just a couple clicks. And then plus, when you go in and enter in payees, for instance, you just type in a few letters, and then Quicken fills in the rest for you. All right, now I take it, one nice thing is it makes it easy for me to, to sort of reconcile and balance my checkbook at the end of the month and compare it to the bank's Exactly, statement. yeah. People tell us that before Quicken, they used to spend a lot of time reconciling. But now with Quicken, you just simply go in and you reconcile the account that you want. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, and you enter in the ending balance. So I just write down example. what it showed up on that bank statement. Exactly. And then Quicken presents all your transactions for you on screen. So this is sort of my statement. I have the bank statement. I click, click, click. Right, and then it's done by simply highlighting the transactions that you get from the bank and typing done. Yeah. It'll tell you that it's reconciled. Now, the thing I like about something like Quicken is you can see these sort of reports and these graphs and really find out what you're doing with your money. Sh show me how that part of this works. Okay. A great way to see what you're doing is using Quicken's graphs. And, for example, you can go in and see what your income and expenses were for the month. And right here you can see um, a pie chart as well as a bar chart showing what your income expenses were. Now, mm -hmm. you're looking at this saying, all right, this is the big picture, but how to understand what's going on? By simply double clicking, you can quick zoom uh -huh. down and see just where your money is going. Now, here you can see that, for instance, a lot of your money went to your mortgage, but wow, we spent a lot of money dining out. Now, what right. was that? If you double click so you again. You just click and keep on drilling down the whole exactly, time. Exactly, and it shows you. Now, here are the transactions. You can see, oh, I went to dinner with my mom, and that was kind of expensive. Well, mom's worth it, so. <laughs> All right, briefly, a couple of new things you've added here. You have something that helps me manage investments, right? What's mm -hmm. that called? Investment Insight or something? Yeah, it's a new feature in Quicken Deluxe, and that is something we call. Investor Insight. This uh -huh. is a combination feature and online service. You can log on, get up-to-date information on stocks and mutual funds. And what you would see on screen is you see the performance chart of the price, the price and the volume chart. But what we found is that people, when they read these charts, they like to see if there are news stories related to the company on a given day. So we've done, we've added these little red dots here. When you mm -hmm. click on a dot, you can see a news story, uh -huh. and right away it pops up. So, so it's made. Process the, of the CD out. comes with a database of stuff, and I can go online and continue to update that. Right. Last point now, you guys mm -hmm. also now make TurboTax, and That's I assume correct. one advantage of Quicken is when it comes to tax time, I can just dump the data from Quicken into TurboTax? Exactly. There's something called TaxLink in TurboTax, and that allows you to simply specify which features or which uh, categories you want to go into which line item on TurboTax. Mm -hmm. And so in TurboTax, you'll be able to see exactly which items go into which line So items. if I do a good job each year of keeping track of my stuff with Quicken, it saves me a lot of time when it comes to tax time. Exactly. 
All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Well, there used to be a lot of tax preparation programs out there, but not anymore. They've all bought each other out, but you still do have some choice. And another product you should look at for doing your taxes is Kiplinger's Tax Cut from Block Financial. Gene's going to tell us about that. First question I have is these Intuit guys have a good deal. You know, they've got Quicken and they've got TurboTax to go right into. Do I lose something by doing something like Tax Cut with, if I was, was using Quicken? Not at all, Stuart. If you used TurboTax or Tax Cut last year, you can import your data into this year's Kiplinger Tax Cut program. Or if you use Quicken or Managing Your Money or Microsoft Money, you can import the data right in. Right. You don't have to re-enter it. Uh -huh. I've set up a, uh, a Quicken 5 file, for example. We'll just double click on it, and that's it. You've got it in your so tax So I function. can import my Quicken files or my old TurboTax data from last that's year. That's correct. Right? And this feature is unique to tax cut. We allow you to edit that data and make sure that you've got everything you want and that it's going where you want, that it's going to the form you want it to go to. Mm -hmm. Are there are there any real differences in these tax preparation programs? Uh, they all do your, a fine job on your taxes. We feel that one of the value-added uh, features of Kiplinger Tax Cut is expert help from the Kiplinger editors who have been mm -hmm. helping Americans with their taxes for more than 72 years. So you've years. got a lot. Of, I mean, one of the things I know when I'm doing my yeah. taxes on the computer, I'm not sure of something and what does that mean and all that mm -hmm. stuff. You provide lots of online help for that? That's correct. Now, let's, uh, let's just take a look at the question and answer interview, okay. which is at the core of the intelligent help. We ask you questions like your professional tax preparer would, and then based on your answers, we fill in the returns. We don't ask you questions that don't have any, any value to you. And uh, let's say, for example, if you have dependents, we start asking you about the dependents and then filling in the form. So I don't have to know anything. Basically, Tax Cut will interview me. I'll answer the questions. It'll tell me what to do, what exactly. forms to use. Exactly. And as you see, if you want context-sensitive Kiplinger help, mm -hmm. you just open it up and it comes up right there in the program. If you'd like to see the IRS instructions, you can also get them online. Here's the instructions for Form 1040. So That's I've got all the IRS form. documents and help here. I've got the Kiplinger stuff to go to. Right there online. And you've got video clips and audio clips too here? We certainly do. As a matter of fact, uh, let's say a home office deduction. That's okay. one a lot That's a of people one. worry yeah. about. They so worry can about I whether do it, shouldn't I do it? They worry about whether they're going to get audited. Right. They worry about whether or not the IRS is going to come after them. So we give some video help here. There's more than two hours of audio and video uh -huh. on this CD-ROM. When it comes to red flags that supposedly guarantee an audit of your tax return, the one that's most talked about is the home office deduction. You know, this is the one that lets you write off a share of your household so expenses. So there's a lot of the like stuff I can, I can not what? only be interviewed by these guys, I can ask them a question, they'll, they'll give me some help. You bet. You can go directly to the forms, which a lot of people want to do, and just yeah. fill them in directly. Here's the familiar 1040. Then we audit the tax return for you. We point out deductions that you may have missed. We point out information that's missing. And we point out red flags that you may not want to call to the IRS's attention. For example, here in this return, we point out that your deductions are higher than the average for your income bracket. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take them, but if you're well, shading, thing, you might get if you're shading yeah. things a bit, yeah. you want to be careful. Then we let you review your tax return, get a snapshot of your tax situation, show where it went, and most importantly, review all your entries so that if you want to change something, say you want to change that to $866 in charitable contributions. In the review, I can do that. I don't have to go back. You don't have to go back. Return. It's right there. And then we recalculate the whole return. You can do your state taxes mm -hmm. for 23 states and carry this data directly into the state form. We then let you print more than 100 forms and worksheets, all of which are accepted by the IRS, and all the state forms are accepted so by the state here. tax authorities. These things cost about the same, TurboTax tax cut? They're comparable, but we, there's a lot of very competitive pricing going on, and, right. and the street prices, you just have to search around okay. for the best buy. Gene, thanks very much. All right, well, the good news is you can use a computer to do your taxes. The bad news is the IRS also has a lot of computers. But they are trying to use their computing power to make it easier for you to file your taxes. Anyone who pays taxes in the United States is probably familiar with this routine. Find an IRS office, look for the right form, and pray that they have not run out. It adds a frustrating note to an already tense time, and it usually happens close to April 15th. This year, there is a partial solution to the problem of missing forms, and you can find it on the Internet. Most people who owe tax wait till the last minute to file their income tax return. In fact, over half the population files in the last two weeks of the filing season. Well, a lot of these people are panicked when they discover that there's a form they needed and they don't have it, particularly when that happens on the weekend, and that's the time most people fill out their income tax form. 
hey, here's a great solution for that. Uh, if, the, if the time crunch is on your side and you, uh, you don't have an option to drive to an office to pick up the form, you can still download it with your computer 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The IRS website contains all the tax forms and publications produced by the IRS. Both the forms and the instruction books can be read online or downloaded using Adobe Acrobat. Like all electronic data, the IRS instructions can be changed almost instantly to account for last-minute tax legislation. Beverly Dubrin, a newsletter publisher in Walnut Creek, California, found out about the IRS site from her Macintosh users group and quickly discovered its advantages. I would go there first and I'd certainly give it a try before I, I went any further and um, also what I've discovered on the site is they've got um, updated news, sort of a, an up-to-date newsletter that they're updating as tax regulations are changing or anything. I think we just the other day I saw something on mutual funds. And so if there were some hot issues going on, I, I would consider this the more reliable information because I, I have found if you make phone calls, sometimes you get three different answers and three different phone calls. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Now, when you file your taxes, hopefully you'll have some income to report. That's the point, isn't it? Well, computers can also help you make money. And one of the best overall investment packages out there is the new deluxe version of Window on Wall Street. David, you're going to tell me about this. Yeah. All right, I'm an investor. I want to make money. Now, these other big guys have all these big, expensive computers. I've got my computer. I buy something like this. How can I use the software in my PC to get good information and make better investment decisions? Well, we do more than just provide the software. Uh, the application itself helps you analyze the various types of information and securities that are available in the marketplace today. All right, now show me how I'm interested, say, in IBM. I want to know, is this a good time to buy IBM, sell IBM, whatever? How do I get better information out of this than I would out of the paper? Well, we can do that by doing a little bit of data mining, so to speak, okay. looking at the entire exchange. For example, we'll look at the New York Stock Exchange. I'll come up here and punch in IBM, the symbol. And IBM, as you notice, comes to the top of our list. Okay, so I've got all kinds of historical data on IBM. Yes, that's what correct. What can I learn by looking at this? Well, I can show you something by paying attention to its fundamentals. For example, EPS dividends and price. We'll click on that. If you, if you start here, you can take a look at the dividend of IBM. It's relatively flat and stable, and then it starts to decline. We'll also notice its earnings per share starts declining precipitously mm -hmm. during this period. If you also notice that around the middle part of 93, the price and earnings per share start increasing uh, in tandem. Even though the dividend has stayed flat. Even though the dividend has stayed so that flat. that tells me maybe it's time to buy this thing. Potentially. Which obviously it was. Potentially. But let me add another dimension to you. It's something okay. called rational analysis. We're also uh, introducing the concept of putting together both fundamental data and technical uh, information uh, to look at infra, uh, securities and stocks rationally. So you're creating a kind of super index of taking normal indices, adding the data together, and giving me a, a new kind of view I couldn't have had without a computer. We sure are. And if I may, let's take a look at earnings per share, fundamental information, and CCI, which is a technical indicator. Okay. Here you can see where that fundamental information, earnings per share, again, uh, of, of Hewlett Packard, and here is the super indicator or rational analysis and telling you about where to buy. Now, now, when you say it's telling me, I mean, the, the software is analyzing this data and saying, yes. I see fundamentals, I see technical Technicals. factors here that suggest this stock is going to I'm combining go them, melding them, and I'm showing you and suggesting that to you. And in this case, it was right. Looks so. HP. Okay. Looks so. Now, you do something called gold mining, in which I actually yes. go in and I use, again, the power of the computer to set up my own standards or filters and say, find me a stock that does this. That is correct. As a matter of fact, we can go in there, our own securities, whatever we're following, we can click on those, or from out of the entire exchange, we can come down here and take a look at the various filters. For one good example is give me the, the uh, securities that are all increasing with a 5% dividend yield okay. or earnings per share rise for two consecutive quarters. So I can set the performance standard I want, say, find that kind of stock for me. That's correct. You certainly couldn't do it without the computer's yes. capability. Yes, mining for gold, if I may. Yeah. All right, last question. We saw Quicken at the beginning of the show, and we saw how I can track my investments with Quicken. Can I use something like Window on Wall Street to update that data and really have these programs talk to each other? You certainly can. As a matter of fact, you can go into uh, Windows on, on Wall Street, access that information from Quicken, and display that in charts and graphs okay. and then update it on a daily, hourly, monthly basis, completely unattended David, and automated. David, thanks a lot. 
Okay, now, another logical extension of your PC would be to hook directly into your bank so you could do routine banking transactions without having to physically go there. Well, online banking has been around for a while, but it's only recently become practical and user-friendly. Here's a look at one of the newest online banking services from Citibank. Waiting in line for a bank teller is less common than it once was, thanks to automatic teller machines, although most bank customers still pay regular visits to the bank lobby. But the end may be near for traditional person-to-person -person transactions, thanks to the personal computer. Home PC banking is winning over people with limited time, like Fire Captain Richard Bramer of San Mateo, California. I have a 24-hour shift, so sometimes I want to do my banking when it's not banking hours. And fortunately, uh, the Citibank on the PC allows me to call any time, day or night, 24 hours a day from any location, as long as I have their, their software and uh, my password, of course. You still, need, uh, you still need to get cash to do every day-to-day -day business, but uh, with uh, auto tellers, you can do that almost any time of the day as well. So really, except for a few banking services, we very, very rarely go to the bank during business hours. Citibank on the PC is an account management system that can link different accounts, transfer funds, and automate bill payments. The software also comes with a connection to Dow Jones News Retrieval and Citicorp Investment Services. Citibank decided to give away the software and provide the service for free for a good reason. A teller transaction costs the bank over $3, while the same transaction online costs about 50 cents. As for customer appeal, Citibank thinks that PC banking is irresistible. The future of banking, uh, again, matches up to customers in a busy society that want to sort of get instant gratification. You want to know right now. I don't want to go in and put a loan application in and have to wait two or three days to find out if I got an answer, if I was approved or not. Um, you, want to get, you want to know right away. Uh, electronics allows us to do that. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Giles Bateman. Well, before PCs, there was no way you could really be your own broker. You needed somebody to do your trades for you. With a PC, you can now go online and trade directly 24 hours a day. Joanne, you're going to show us how to use eSchwab, which is the new online trading software from Schwab. Uh, let's say I've done all my work. I've got my online banking going. I've done my homework with Windows on Wall Street. I've got my Quicken account going. I now want to actually do some trades. How do I do this with eSchwab? The first thing you need is eSchwab software. You can obtain eSchwab software by simply having $5,000 in an eSchwab account, and the software is available in our branches or through our so 800. So I open up an account, minimum $5,000, I get the software for free. Let's say I've gotten past that now. Okay. I want for, first of all, I need to know how much money do I have around, right? That's exactly right. And what you would do is you would click on the account balance screen and get your account balances. Um, new account balances are provided daily as opposed to monthly. So I get a daily statement. statement from Schwab now? What you're probably going to want to do next is you're going to want to get a, a quote on what okay, you're... Okay, so I'm interested in selling something, let's see, that's in my portfolio, so I want to check and see what the last price was. That's right. So what you would do is you could simply type in the symbol of the mm -hmm. security you're interested in selling and dial into Schwab and you will receive real-time quotes. Okay, so we would see what that, and I say, okay, that's fine. Selling at 35 sounds pretty good to me. Let's go sell some. Okay, you click on the trading screen. Mm -hmm. You set up your order to sell. So I pick my account. Okay, it was AMA T. I wanted to sell. You select your action, which is going to be sell. You select your quantity. So 100 shares I'll sell. Okay, and then you simply submit the order to Schwab. Mm -hmm. And that's it? That's it. I've done it. Yeah, you, it will give you one um, read back. Make sure you want to place the order, and then you click place, and you're done. Okay, can I change my mind, or have I really placed that order? You've placed the order. You can quickly, though, change your order. So if you click on the order status screen and click change, so you can... Real quick. Okay, what I'm doing here, though, I mean, I'm not just sending some email to some broker at Schwab. I am actually going to the floor of an exchange and saying, sell the stuff. Exactly. You don't have to have any kind of middleman. It's a completely computerized trade. So the advantages are, one, it's quick. I'm saving time. I don't have to wait to find my broker on the phone and all that stuff. You're saving time, and there's a significant um, commission savings as well. So how much am I saving money-wise? It's going to cost you $39 per equity trade up to 1,000 trades. Really? Well, that's pretty good. It's great. Okay. Now, I, I take it it can do other things since it's a computer. Can it log my transactions and keep track of what I've been doing? 
Absolutely, we have a transaction screen which is very similar to a checkbook register. And what you can do is you can either you know, place your trades through eSchwab or you can download them, 120 days worth of trades. Okay, now can I also kind of look at my portfolio and get the graphs and all that stuff to see really where I stand to evaluate my positions? Yes, we have um, a um, portfolio manager available through this product. You can look at your asset allocation graph, for example, mm -hmm. and let me show you that. Okay, and this is going to show me where my assets are in my Schwab account, is that it? Exactly, it will, it will show you the breakdown of your assets. So let's okay, say so you have- Okay, so it's showing me I've got 44% in cash and 23% in mutual funds and so on. Exactly. Okay, now, uh, people are really using this, right? And you gave me an incredible figure that, that the number of people who are actually doing their own online transactions has doubled in the past year? That's right, it was 7% in 1994, and in 1995 it was 15%. So 15% of your customers are, are doing it this Placing way. trades through, through these products. All right, Joanne, thanks a lot. All right, information is everything. If you're an investor, Aristotle of Nassus once said, the way to make money is to know something nobody else knows. Well, Giles is going to tell us how to get that info edge by logging onto the Internet. Thanks, Stuart. There's plenty of financial information online. So let's start with the Finance Center. This is sort of a personal finance center. It lets you find out information about financing a home, a, a truck, things with credit cards. Let's talk about financing a home. So I'll click there. And then Finance Center provides me with a number of calculators, in this case for home buying, for refinancing, et cetera. I'll click on the one for home buying. Then you can ask a number of questions. How much can I borrow? What will my payments be, et cetera? And then uh, Finance Center will allow you to fill in a form with your own information. And then you can find out the answers to these questions. Next, let's check out uh, banking on the World Wide Web. Now, this is a good jumping off point, a great collection of links as well. Uh, information about banking on the Internet. I click here, and we've got uh, links to all the other sort of banking institutions which have a presence on the web. Now, last but not least, if you are into stocks or you follow stocks, you might want to check out the Stockmaster at MIT. This uh, has charts about stocks, about mutual funds. Here, we're going to go uh, check out some stock charts, and as you can uh, as you can see, we've got all sorts of options here, different companies we can follow. The uh, information is very current. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a graph of the NASDAQ composite over the last year. Thanks, Giles. Time now for our weekly summary of the latest news in the field of personal computing. Here is this week's Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, Intel is giving away software to let you make long-distance phone calls via the Internet. The Internet Phone Applet is designed for PCs running Windows 95. It incorporates Microsoft's user location service technology to allow you to find other Internet Phone users through existing Internet directory services. Compaq has redesigned their commercial desktop PC line. The new Desk Pro 2000, 4000, and 6000 series all feature Compaq's intelligent manageability technology. This offers built-in inventory, fault, and security management. Oki Data has announced the first laser printer to sell for under $300. Called the Oki Page 4W, the new printer produces 600 DPI output at four pages per minute. It's also one of the smallest laser printers available, measuring about 12 inches by 8 inches. Microsoft says it will launch a travel zine called Mungo Park in September. Named for an 18th century explorer who disappeared on an expedition, Mungo Park will be free at first but may later be made available on a subscription-only basis. Microsoft's first electronic magazine slate plans to charge about $20 for annual subscriptions beginning this fall. If you have access to the web but don't have an email account just yet, check out Hotmail. They're giving away full-featured email accounts. You don't need to buy any software so you can access your email from any computer or platform via the World Wide Web. Hotmail allows you to enclose and view graphics within an email message and create live links to URLs sent within a message. Hotmail will make its money selling ads rather than on end-user fees. And finally, if you have an email account already, there's still time to send a message to your favorite Olympic athletes. IBM has set up surf shacks in Atlanta to connect athletes to the Internet. The fan mail system is linked to the official Olympic website at atlanta.olympic.org. That's it for this week's news. We'll send it back to you, Stuart. Now for my pick of the week. Every once in a while, we have to go through a technology mind shift 
to adjust to the new realities of what digital appliances can do. For example, years after PCs and printers came out, many of us still kept around old IBM Selectric typewriters to do envelopes and labels until we realized it really wasn't necessary. Well, now it's time to rethink the telephone. If you have a PC on your desk, odds are it has a numeric keypad, an RJ11 phone jack, a speaker, and a microphone. Why do you still have a telephone taking up space on your desk? The folks at Integrated Technology say you don't need that phone anymore. They've come out with a very nifty keyboard called the CompuPhone 2000 that takes the place of your telephone. When a phone call comes in, the keyboard rings, or lights up if you would like. You can easily regulate volume and make other phone adjustments using the keypad over here. The numeric keypad doubles as a touchtone phone keypad, and the CompuPhone 2000 comes with intelligent telephony software that lets you make a call just by pointing and clicking on a phone number in any kind of Windows application. It comes with a headset, if that's what you want, and it provides complete telephone logging functions and call annotation for keeping an automatic record of who you called, how long you talked, and what you said. It sells for about $90, and once you try it, you'll never miss that old telephone again. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more on the latest in personal computer technology. I'm Stuart Chaffe. We'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Acer America, proud supporters of intelligent programming, computer or otherwise. And by Intel, the computer inside. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. For more information on anything you've seen on today's program, check out our website at www.pctv.com.